whether it's an international, national, or local tragedy, the Red Cross is always there. Today they're here on this morning's Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning with the Myrtle Beach Herald. We're focused on tsunami relief, as well as so many activities the American Red Cross, and we're visiting with its director of public support. Good morning, Jennifer Sweat. Good morning, Sweat. Greg. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks so much for getting in. For getting me up. weird. I'm normally focused on names entirely, but the Red Cross has had so much of a focus now, and you guys more or less stay away from name focus and instead more focused on all the relief efforts right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've been very busy the last couple of weeks here locally, even helping out with the relief efforts in Southeast Asia. You guys are slammed all the time, though. Oh, we are. Unfortunately, it's, um, it never ends because of the services that we provide on a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week service. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mer American Red Cross with the Horry County chapter or the PD chapter or Georgetown, I mean, all the chapters around mm -hmm. have been going so strong recently, and mm -hmm. it seems like uh, it just doesn't lot let down. No, it's been very busy. We had a, a very active and busy hurricane season, and then going right in from that, uh, now helping with the relief efforts. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, in Southeast Asia, we've been busy, and I've been very busy doing a lot of uh, public speaking appearances, uh, media appearances, that kind of thing with the tsunami relief. Mm -hmm. You all have a heck, heck of a lot mm -hmm. of fires, it seems like, around the winter time. We have had, we, the winter months are usually the, the uh, largest months for us as far as family fires. Uh, and it tends, you tend to have more family fires during the winter months because of people using things a lot of times improperly like space heaters and uh, Christmas tree lights, that kind of thing a lot of times. And mm -hmm. actually over the past three weeks, we have had a large number of family fires. Is that right? Yes, and you, you don't even hear about a fourth of those in the media. I mean, we have several two and three uh, in a day sometimes. Is that right? Yes. All throughout Horry County now, you know, because Horry County is a big county. Right. We're not just talking about Myrtle Beach or North Myrtle Beach. We're talking about in Loris and Aner and and some of these, you know, smaller communities. Jennifer, how do y'all get the word out about that? You say the media doesn't cover a number of those. I mean, right. y'all obviously find out about these, uh, I guess, as fast mm -hmm. as anyone, right, if the fire department does. Uh, we do. A lot of times the fire department will notify us. Um, in some cases, it will be the family or the, the ones involved themselves will notify us. So we don't actually go out to, to the calls normally. Um, if we hear of a fire, we're not running, knocking down their door to see what we can do. Because some, in some cases, uh, individuals are not interested in, in assistance from the Red Cross. So we're here for everyone if they want our assistance and need us. So usually they will come to us, either the fire department will call us or the individuals themselves will come to us. Now, of course, there's also, I mean, for the, some of the folks who aren't looking for support, even though the Red Cross is there for them, you all obviously need support mm -hmm. on a constant basis, fundraising support or otherwise, we do. to maintain the ability to help all these families. We do. We need support on a constant basis because, as we've talked before, Greg, we are part of, we're chartered by the American Red Cross, but we're an independent chapter. Each chapter of the Red Cross is an independent, standalone chapter, meaning that we raise our own funds. We do not receive any type of national funding. So the services that we provide on a daily basis, the services that the community expects from us and, right. and that we, of course, provide uh, graciously on, on a daily basis are services that we're able to do because of local support, because mm -hmm. of donations from citizens of Horry County that we're able to do that. You know, it's so fascinating when you think about that aspect. There's so many charities, mm -hmm. uh, big national name charities like the American Red Cross, where uh, they raise a lot of funds, but those funds oftentimes don't stay right here. They come back and have an impact on mm -hmm. ORI or the PD, let's say the American Heart Association, which I'm right. involved with, the March of Dimes. Mm -hmm. A lot of that's going into research right. to find cures to problems, either heart disease or stroke or birth defects or prematurity campaigns. But oftentimes, y'all, those funds that are raised are being redirectly uh, di redistributed right here, mm -hmm. right now. They're all here, stays here in ORI County to help with uh, a lot of the emer uh, immediate emergency needs right. of individuals, That's such giant. as family fires, yeah. such as military messaging, which is another thing that we've been very busy with, of course, uh, with the situation going on mm -hmm. um, right now. Share with the viewers real quick, if they got to run to the house and be in a few minutes after 7 and get mm -hmm. off to school or to work, what's the best number for someone to call to find out about legitimate services like the Amer American Red Cross or other donation relief efforts 
to help the tsunami of victims as well as fire victims in the county as well as so many other things we're about to talk about. Okay. They can call the Red Cross chapter office okay. at 477-0020. Okay. That's 843-477-0020. And that's an 8 to 5 phone number. I mean, there's an yes. after-hour service, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. And you can call that number 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Great. If someone will, will answer. If we're not in the office and answering, then the answering service will, will answer that call. And if it's something... Um, an immediate emergency need then with it like with a fire or a military call then they will call the individual that's on call okay 24 good. hours a day great Jennifer yeah. real quick about yourself are you originally from the area I'm not I'm from central Louisiana mm. and I moved here about a year and a half ago is that right mm -hmm. what prompted the move was it the Red Cross um no actually I started with the Red Cross after I moved so really? I was here so you were just ready to move to Myrtle Beach yeah Horry County right. well that's like a big area. move yeah so, um, actually, my boyfriend had a job transfer here, so that's oh, what wow. prompted me to yeah. move in the beginning. But, you know, I have to say, I visited a few times before I came, of course, and, you know, you have the swamp or, or the beach, so. <laughs> the swamps in yeah. uh, central Louisiana, yeah. yeah. That's a big so. deal. Now, had you lived virtually your entire life in Louisiana mm -hmm. prior to coming to mm -hmm. Ori? Mm -hmm. I lived in Louisiana my entire life. I even went to school in Lake Charles, Louisiana, wow. is where I got my bachelor's degree. Your entire life mm -hmm. there in uh, Louisiana. Well, that yeah. is a big move then. Do you still get back off of your family in Louisiana? I do. Um, all of my family is there, and I went back for the holidays. Yeah. And I was able to see my two nieces and my mom and my brother and sister, and it was a wonderful time. Yeah, that's exciting. So I go back as much as I can, not as often as I would like to, of course. I stay really busy, of course, with the Red Cross. Yeah. But I, I stay in constant contact with everyone. Email is wonderful. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, so you're so, Aunt Jennifer. I am. For two nieces. What are yes. their ages? Uh, two. And one just turned, Avery just turned one in November. Mm -hmm. And Cassidy uh, is my oldest niece, and she will, will be two in February. <laughs> so they do well just getting Jennifer out. You're not yet Aunt Jennifer. I know, Jennifer. no, yeah. but I have, I have one of them saying Jen. She can Jen. say Jen. Yeah. Sometimes when she wants to. When she wants yeah. to. That's right. <laughs> they just love your great smile and, and spending time with them. This is your brother or sister's mm -hmm. uh, children? Yes. My brother has a little girl. My sister has a little girl. Oh, so each one of them. Each one wow. is. Wow. Yes. Yeah, is it just the three of y'all, three mm -hmm. kids? It is. I'm the oldest. Great. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw for a little while you've been in another charitable group prior to joining the American Red Cross mm -hmm. and before that with a group, I think, Gen X. Mm -hmm. Share with the viewers a little bit about your background prior to arriving with the, uh, joining the American Red Cross and some okay. of the experiences in communities serving those communities. Okay. Well, well Gen X is a company. Um, we do medical case man or they did, did. Yeah. they they did they medical do. they yeah. do medical Sorry. case management um services for mainly workers comp and i traveled around the state of louisiana for about a year doing that but prior to that i was with the american heart association which i know is very dear to your heart mm -hmm. um there and I, I worked with the heart association there in central louisiana for about a year and a half doing mm -hmm. heart walks and um, I did a couple of social events, galas, which we didn't have anything quite as large as what you have here in Myrtle Beach. I yeah. went last year, and it is a wonderful, wonderful event um, that the Heart Ball here. But yeah. ours was a lot s smaller social event that we did. But, right. Yeah, so. Todd Harms was with us on Monday mm -hmm. and Tammy Eves on Tuesday, pumping that up. And, Good. of course, you know, it's so fascinating. Tomorrow, Dennis Wade will be with us talking about Horry County Walk America, and obviously mm -hmm. today the Red Cross. It's fascinating when you think about the community involvements. And of course, again, those two very large vital groups mm -hmm. are raising funds in the prematurity campaign and other campaigns that the March of Dimes does or that the Heart Association do, like the Red Cross, mm -hmm. CPR, uh, training in the community, both the Heart Association and the Red Cross are actively involved in that. But you all are doing so much when we think about fire victims mm -hmm. or folks, uh, obviously the blood mobiles and blood. Let's get into some of the other things you all are doing in the community okay. that require funds, Jennifer. Right. Well, since you mentioned blood mobile, Greg, um, that's something that I'm not with blood services. We're, that we have two separate offices here okay. um, in Horry County. You have the chapter office, which we deal with disasters and uh, health and safety first aid CPR, that kind of thing. And then you have blood services with the blood mobile and blood donation. But with blood services is something I want to encourage every listener uh, to please do and to think about doing is be a blood donor. Because we actually, um, South Carolina does not collect enough blood uh, that we need every month. I mean, we're constantly having to go outside the state to get blood just for individuals here in the state. So that's something that we always need is blood donations. 
Mm. Why are the why are the levels so low, Jennifer? You think? I mean, why is South Carolina so low juxtaposed against other states? I'm not really sure, Greg. I mean, just because that's not the area that right. I'm in, and I haven't really investigated that mm -hmm. or researched it. Um, but I know that a lot, a large part of it, I think, with Horry County is because we have so many visitors, and sure. um, you know, with. Our tourist population, I think, has a lot to do with it, too, here. Draining the blood supply. Yeah, in this area. Oh, absolutely. They would have a, a, a tiny permanent population. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of folks who come to vacation in the area don't think about donating blood while they're here. They right, of course They probably not. do that in their home communities. So that's why it's so important for those of us who are residents here to make sure that we do, you know, do our duty and, and what we say, help save a life, right. donate blood. That's Absolutely. one of the easiest ways you can do it. And some individuals are not able to for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But those of us who can should do it and do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can give not, a lot of blood. That's yes, right. Not just once every, you know, five years mm -hmm. or once a year. Right. First aid and CPR is another thing you all are mm -hmm. intimately involved with, particularly with all the lifeguard services mm -hmm. here in the area. I think you all are the official folks that help train those uh, lifeguards. Right. We do lifeguard training, um, just basic first aid and CPR classes, right. uh, like I said, lifeguard training, swimming lessons. We even do babysitting courses. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I this didn't know that. Do you all do them at the chapter training. office or at hospitals? Uh, we do at the chapter office. Okay. The hospitals have a different um, babysitting course that they do, right. but we have a, a American Red Cross certified babysitting course that we also offer. And and you can call again the, uh, the chapter office for more information on that. The 843-477-0020 number. Correct. And it's such a great location, very easy for anyone mm -hmm. in Horry County with the, the air base uh, opening up. And of course, you all are on Pampas Drive here right. on the former Air Force Base, so very easy to find. What about, uh, you know, we th so much has gone into tsunami relief and mm -hmm. the recognition of that and it dovetailing with so many of the fires here in the area, mm -hmm. a lot of local needs, but when you recognize those needs abroad and to think of the impact it's had on so many millions of people, how have y'all gone about uh, finding ways locally to raise funds and getting those local funds into international hands? Well, the first two weeks uh, we have, have really just um, been bombarded by phone calls of people wanting to know how they can help, how they make out their checks, and want to make sure that their donation goes directly to the tsunami relief mm -hmm. um, and asking questions about donating other types of, of items or in-kind donations. Mm -hmm. um, so we've really been busy answering the phones and doing that. Uh, we've taken a lot of donations through our office. I know a lot of people have have logged on to redcross.org and made a credit card donation for the tsunami relief efforts. Mm -hmm. And you can also call 1-800-HELP-NOW, which is a Red, the American Red Cross uh, national number to make a donation. 1-800-HELP-NOW. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, that's great. But we've had a lot since um, the this, this sixth of the month, since January 6th, we have received over $13,000 in our office. Is that right? Mm -hmm. In wow. donations for, strictly for the tsunami relief. Mm -hmm. And so that's, what, that's just what's come through our office. For, it has for, to be clearly um, made clear on the mm -hmm. check and the four column that it's for tsunami relief? Right. If, if you wanted to go, you would make your check out to the American Red Cross International Relief Fund, or even if you made it out to American Red Cross and in the memo section, um, specify that it's for tsunami relief. Okay. International Relief Fund or mm -hmm. tsunami relief. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, in the in the body of the check, ARC tsunami relief, or any mm -hmm. way they make that out, just to make clear that right, it would be to the American Red Cross, right. uh, and then specify on there, you know, tsunami relief or mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, something of that nature. There's also quite a few local fundraisers that are going on. Uh, some, some specials that mm -hmm. I know that one happened this past a Saturday at yeah. eight o'clock, the tsunami aid one. But I think there's a, a spectacular a series of fundraisers that are happening locally. Um, there are. Yeah. There is, uh, as I gave you information about, the TPC mm -hmm. of Myrtle Beach right. is doing the golf tournament. Uh, if you want to. The turn, Tournament Players Club, of course, their sixth anniversary mm -hmm. special, but this year in conjunction with you all, the American Red Cross. Right. Uh, January 28th, 29th, 30th, mm -hmm. and 31st. Right. Playing for just $35 with a minimum $10 donation. Right, and they said that is the lowest that they have ever offered a round of golf there. Yeah. They said they've done $39 before, but they've never done a $35 round of golf. Nick so uh, Couric mm -hmm. was with us, uh, Kali, last month or the month oh, before good. for a fundraiser for Toys for Tots uh, related. Uh, and I think oh, 39 was, was the meet. figure. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right, which is 35 is an amazingly low number. All mm -hmm. money donated would go towards the tsunami relief fund. Well, not all the money donated. It's $35 for a round of golf, right. and then you have to make an additional $10, minimum $10 donation Correct. to the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And we will have Red Cross 
uh, representatives there that you could, the players are able to designate. So really, um, you're able to play for $45 basically at a minimum, and right. you're, they're able to, of course, donate more if they like, and then they can designate at the time of the donation if you would like for your money to stay for the local chapter for local needs or else for tsunami relief. So they can go either way. When mm -hmm. you pay they the $45, $10 dollars the Red Cross. Right. And, they can, it, and that's a minimum $10. Mm -hmm. Folks minimum. can pay 100 right. bucks to play, and 65 of that will go to the Red Cross. Right. And what they're probably going to do is we'll be there that morning, the Red Cross, uh, myself or someone else with the Red Cross, one of our volunteers will be there that morning, and they will make a donation to us first. Then we'll, we would give them a card or something of that nature to be able to take and get the $35 round of golf Great. there that morning. 843-357-3399. I think it's extension 1. 843-357-3399. Mm -hmm. Extension right. 1 to get in on those great deals because right. you've got obviously layout times to mm -hmm. play. That's the 28th, 29th, 30th, and 31st of this month. So it's getting really close. Right. TPC down there in Merle's mm -hmm. which is fantastic off of 707. Golly, what a great offer. Mm -hmm. What a great offer. How about some of the other events that are coming up? I know you've got a list of them with so many. You probably need to look down at some notes here a, just a to keep things, up with yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, we have, and it's really been overwhelming. It's been wonderful that the people that have been calling our office and calling me saying, you know, we want to do this. Yeah. Uh, what can we do to help or, or tell me they've been to have uh, like TPC or they already had this in place saying, you know what, we want to do this. So yeah. it's really wonderful to have uh, the community reaching out to us saying, look, this is what we want to do to help or how can we help, that kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Um, I know that Icon Ultra Club is going to be doing a benefit on Wednesday, January 26th. Right, right. Um, and they're going to have all of the donations from that benefit will go directly toward the tsunami relief efforts. Okay. Another one that I was telling you about earlier is um, Scalise Development. Mm -hmm. They actually called me a couple of days ago, Brian Scalise did with Scalise Development, and they recently acquired the Sea Captain's Restaurant in Merle's Inlet, mm -hmm. and they are going to donate everything in, they're actually having an auction, and everything in there will be donated to the Red Cross, all proceeds. So there will be an auction on January 20th, that's a Thursday, at 9 a.m at the Sea Captain's Restaurant in Merle's Inlet. So they are just selling out selling. all of the items inside. Correct. Inside the restaurant, all the restaurant items. Right, everything from ch uh, tables and chairs to whatever's on the wall. Everything in there, he said, will be auctioned off. And 100% of the proceeds from that will go to the Red Cross. Right. And what they're actually going to do is divide it three ways um, between tsunami relief, the Horry County chapter of the Red Cross, and the Georgetown chapter of the Red Cross. That is fantastic. Mm -hmm. What a great commitment on Scalise. I know. As part of course, you said on January 22nd, Divine Dining, whose corporate headquarters are next door, they are really mm -hmm. reaching out in the community and reaching deep right, to this thing of the Club. Icon Culture Club, mm -hmm. the Ultra Club. And of course, folks can call the Red Cross to get information, any particulars, as opposed to giving out a bunch of phone numbers. They Correct. can always call the chapter office at the 843-477-0020. Of course. Okay. Good. Yeah, and we're finding out about things daily, I and mean, we sure. have people calling me daily, um, Greg. And there's one more I wanted to mention. Oh, and it was Coastal Grand Mall. Right. Stacy Dickerson called me yesterday with Coastal Grand Mall, and they're actually going to be doing something on Saturday, January 29th. Great. Um, at the mall from 12 to 5. The shoppers are able to come, and we're gonna, the Red Cross will have a booth there, and they can make a donation to the Tsunami Relief Fund strictly there at the Coastal Grand Mall. Great. What a great commitment. Yeah. Golly, it's so. fantastic to see folks opening their doors. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you have time to oversee all this or be involved with all this, John. It's keeping me very busy. <laughs> You've got a very active board of directors, and, of course, mm -hmm. folks like John Trudeau and so many of mm -hmm. them that continue to reach out to the community and be involved to help make these things happen. Yeah, we, we stay pretty busy, especially right now, but um, we love doing it and love being involved in the community. And most of all, thank the community for their support and for wanting to be involved and to be active in something. Mm -hmm. Very especially definitely. Especially supporting the Red Cross. Now, if, if folks want to learn about blood donation, they can still call your office to mm -hmm. find out about the location. And obviously well, with the chapters in the PD and in Georgetown, mm -hmm. chapters in Southeast and North Carolina, the same needs are happening in those communities. Even though right. these are all separate chapters, mm -hmm. you all are still working under the same umbrella. This is the one that uh, Senator Dole formerly o oversaw. Mm -hmm. and, right. I mean, the, We're still working is, under the same umbrella with the American Red Cross, and we each, again, are providing, you know, each providing our own services mm -hmm. in the areas, you know, with PD chapter providing the services in that area, and they're having to raise funds to provide their, the services that we provide here in Norrie County, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Georgetown as well. 
Who are some of the major philanthropic gift leaders that are, is that all around the country? There have been some sizable folks. There has been big, with, with the tsunami right. relief. Um, I know that Sandra Bullock is one that we have all heard a lot about because she uh, recently donated a million dollars. Right. Um, yeah. Another one, uh, another one of those that would be something um, that we, we all hear about is Costco. Sure. What's something Costco locally doing? Donated a million dollars. Is that right? This is all to the tsunami relief efforts. Sure. Sure. Um, Costco donated a million dollars plus 2.8 million in customer donation programs. Wow. Another one locally would be uh, Bank One donated a million dollars. Best Buy did a dollar for dollar nationwide customer match matching gift program up to a million dollars. CVS Pharmacy donated a million dollars. You're kidding. To, yeah, so these are local business, or I say local, but you know, businesses right. in our area that are supporting this tsunami relief effort with the Through American the Red, Red Cross. Cross. They're right. using the American Red helping. Cross to get the funds in the right hands. Correct. That's fantastic. Walmart and Sam's Club was another one. They did a $2 million gift. Wow. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned some of the, you know, the sure, corporations the ones that, that have we have local locally. Tie -ins. Uh, Target Corporation did a million dollar gift. State Farm and Morgan Stanley both did $1 million gifts. Actually, Morgan Stanley did a $2 million gift. Is that so right? So I know I'm not, I'm not going to no, be able sure. to say everyone. Those are all some folks. Of the ones, and a, right. and Merrill again, Lynch was another one. Today being the 20th dollars. of January, in the mm -hmm. last 10 days, there could have been a lot of other folks that have right. local tie-ins. Right. That's just some folks. of the That's ones. Right. Um, you know, I only mentioned a few of those. Sure. Because our, the American Red Cross, uh, just with American Red Cross efforts, are, is estimating $400 million to this relief effort with the tsunami relief Just effort. with the Red Cross? Just that's the Red Cross relief effort. Wow. wow. And that's not only immediate emergency needs, but long term. Now, what are some well. of the, and those can oftentimes put strains on local chapters that are mm -hmm. trying to get normal things done as it right. relates to fire, uh, fire relief efforts. And mm -hmm. of course, you all had that big Christmas Day dinner I want to hear mm -hmm. a little bit about in just a second. But we got a couple of minutes. There are a lot of constraints that are put on the chapters when folks move some of their funds off of normal chapter giving and move them into tsunami relief. I guess that happens all the time. It does, depending on the situation and the disaster and what's going on. And of course, this um, being such a horrible event with the, with the tsunami and the earthquake mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia. But you do see it, it takes a drain on the local chapters. Um, we actually usually feel the effects of it because uh, those a lot of times when individuals are donating and maybe they choose to donate to that relief effort instead of the local chapter right. if, even if they're normally um, donors of the local chapter so that is something that I'm, I'm sure you'll be hearing me in the months to come you know asking for donations again right right highlighting the fact that a lot of the a lot of the normal donors were making gifts directly right. to tsunami and, and we're grateful for that and thankful Absolutely. for that because we need that but also um, we, we need local donations to just stay so here we locally can, for uh, so fire we can victims help, and otherwise yeah, continue absolutely the services that we provide let's talk real briefly we just got a couple of minutes jennifer okay. janice uh, ash saliano was mm -hmm. with us golly it seems like a little more than a month ago mm -hmm. pumping up the uh, christmas day dinner it's right at a month ago christmas day dinner a big opportunity obviously the red cross been doing that or in conjunction with the red cross mm -hmm. with so many uh, area churches i guess blaine and first pres and whittemore park middle school how did it go it was a wonderful event. Janice, of course, does a phenomenal job yeah. um, every year, and she just knows this, like, she does it like clockwork. She's been doing it for so long. Um, Mark Robicki was center plate in the Ryerson Plaza Hotel and Convention Center, and um, those guys really helped a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, but it was, it was a great event. We had, actually, we fed over uh, 2,500 people. You're with kidding. With about 3,000 meals, because a lot of those actually, you know, we, we gave them meals and provided meals for two and three days for wow. the Christmas dinners with some people. Yeah. So it was. All the funds came in at the last minute. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the 10000 she was seeking. Uh, right. A lot of the funds came in at the last minute. We actually had a wonderful donation from Jam and Leather, uh, a $4,000 gift. Wow. Right. Yes. The week of. So Jamie Keats there with Jam and Leather is a wonderful and dear friend of the Red Cross, and he's a huge supporter of us. So Yeah, I've seen great. some pictures that mm -hmm. you've sent out or in your monthly newsletter, mm -hmm. I think, which has just begun. And that's right. something that has just begun, correct? 
your monthly right. newsletter, or is that just something that I've begun to receive? And I mean, that very That's popular. Maybe, sorry, maybe something you just got to receive. But finally. it's something that we've been doing like uh, two to three times a year. The Red Cross will send out a newsletter. I saw a great shot of a Jamie, maybe <laughs> a check even before this one. That was for the uh, charity auction that he does during wow. Bike Week. Jamie does, uh, Jamie, well, Jamie Leather does a charity auction. 100% of the proceeds from that auction will go to the Red Cross. And he wow. does it during the spring and the fall bike rallies. So many businesses yeah. that step up to the plate that make mm -hmm. the Red Cross work, albeit there's still so many And that's so the only way we're able needs. to do it. Yeah. It's, there's community support. That's fantastic. Great words. Thanks so much for being with us this Thank morning, Thank you, Greg. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with Jennifer Sweat coming up next. You know, you often think about those localized issues like a house burning down or a lifeguard needing some basic CPR training. Are you needing basic CPR training for, for children in the house to be able to monitor aspects? You don't always think about tsunami relief or so many other things that groups like the American Red Cross are utilized to get support all over the world. This is an organization that constantly does that, but they do it on the local level as well. The phone number is simple, 843 Four seven seven zero zero two zero eight four three four seven seven zero zero two zero. You heard Jennifer say it twenty four seven. There's someone there. They'll get back to you immediately. They're providing relief on the local level, but they're also providing relief relief all over the world. Give them a call. See how you can be involved in helping keep the American Red Cross strong.